Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 2b of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on question number 5 on page 49. It reads, a car accelerates from rest at 2 meters per second with a speed of 40, to a speed of 40 meters per second. It then travels at steady speed and finally decelerates to rest with an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. So, so deceleration was 5 meters per second squared the acceleration was 2 meters per second squared and everything else works as normal so just draw out your, your graph as normal and there's we'll say that regions 1 to 3 so let's just uh, let's do region 1 I'm going to say u, v, a, s and t so initial velocity was 0 final velocity was 40 the acceleration was 2 so let's get the, the, the time if we tried that v is equal to u plus a t. The only unknown is t, and that will work. Remember, for every every unknown you have, you must have a single equation that allow you to get it. So if you have two unknowns, you need two equations in order to solve that. Uh, otherwise, you can't do it. Well, you need at least, we'll say, at least two. So that's 40 is equal to 0 plus 2t. Therefore, t is equal to 20 seconds. 20 seconds. By the way, sorry, I'd marked it in already. I jumped ahead, I suppose you could say. So what I did as well is I said this is equal to 20 seconds here. And we're given in the book that it, it, it moves it moves ahead for another 20 seconds. So I said this will say from here to here, I'm going to call the time T1. So this point is 20 plus T1. And if I said from here to here is T2 seconds, well then from uh, here to here is 20 plus T2 seconds. So let's just get the distance travelled in region 1, I'm going to use the formula I always do, which is s is equal to u plus v over 2 times the time, which is equal to 40 over 2, which is 20 times the time, which I said was 20, is equal to 400 meters. Notice, that I'm not writing down everything because literally this is a carbon copy in many respects of the other, uh, the other questions we've been doing. Now, in question 4, I introduced something to be honest, not, I'm not really happy the way I introduced this. I probably should do a whole video on that separately. I may, I may do that. But it was, it was relating slope. It was relating slope to the acceleration. And I just, let, I'm going to try and do it again. I'll, you know, I'll expose. I'll, I'll try and explain it again, and perhaps over these two videos, you could perhaps maybe get a feel of it. So first of all, just very quickly, I'm going to say, well, what is speed? It is a rate of change of distance I'm going to say WRT that means with respect to time how do you know that because look if we look at our formula like this distance is equal to speed over time and it's equal to if you say well it's it's, it's it is the sp the change in speed it, that's what you that's you all that's what you write it's you, you actually don't you don't realize it but it's a change in speed like if something took 20 seconds well then you're saying t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 20 therefore delta this triangle means delta it's the greek letter delta and that usually in maths means a change so delta t is equal to 20 seconds and that's what you'd use or if at the beginning t was equal to 20 seconds and that's t1 and t2 is equal to 40 seconds well then you would say that delta t is equal to 20 seconds and then you would say something like you know v is equal to whatever distance like 100 over 20 seconds because you would say the exact same thing for your distance you would say well it began for example it began at x is equal to 10 meters it finished at x is equal to 100 meters and the distance Look at the distance. The distance is equal to the delta x. The distance travelled in this case would be 90 meters. So we might, for, 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 for example, have that the speed is equal to delta x over delta t is equal to 90 over 10. Is that what I said it was? I think it was 10. Let's say whatever delta t was. No, 20 is what it was. And that's equal to whatever, whatever it is, 9 over 2. So we're saying that distance, sorry, speed is a rate of change of distance with respect to time. Similarly, acceleration is a rate of change, we'll say acceleration is the rate of change of, of speed with respect to time. 
So you could say, now this isn't fully correct, you would say A is equal to V over T. And that's actually, that's almost correct. But what is better to say is delta V over delta T. So now, I said delta V over delta T is a change. So it's what it, what it was at a later time against what it was at an earlier time or position. Now if you're doing a maths course, everything is graphed. And we're graphing things. If you look, we graphed things up here. So the same thing applies. If you if you if you were getting a position here, this might be y2, y1. Sorry, um, that would be x2, y1, x2, y2. Sorry, this would be x1, y1. And you'd say, well, what's the distance in between them? And you'd take away the x's and you'd take away the y's. So that's a delta y over a delta x. Now, a slope. The slope is given in maths. The slope is given as follows. You say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that's equal to m, that's equal to the slope. m is kind of the letter we give for slope. What's that? The change in y with respect to x. So you could say that the slope is the rate of change of y with respect to x. And look, what, we, what are we plotting up here? We're plotting t and v. So the rate of change of y, which is the speed, with respect to t or x, which is time, is equal to the slope. So the rate of change of speed with respect to time is the slope of this graph. And what do we say? We said that, and I'm, I'm telling you that in this case, in a case of a velocity time graph, the slope is equal to the acceleration. Slopes can equal many different things, as in have physical meanings. But this you know, another way of writing what I've written there would be delta y over delta x, triangle y over triangle x. Sorry, you can't see that. Like this. That is a slope, and that's also equal to an acceleration. That's a slope and an acceleration. So how do we how do we get slopes? Well, we get slopes basically by using tan. Okay. So let me try this out here now, right? Let's, let's try something here. Let's see, because like I said, I wasn't happy the way I explained it the last time. Say if I have a triangle. Say if I have a triangle. There are different ways of looking at this, but um, I'm after graphing something and I made a triangle out of it. We'll say this point up here is 20, uh, and, this, and this one is, we'll say, 5. So like that's 0, that's x is equal to 5, that's y is equal to 20, and so on. Well, look, I'll just draw the points. So that's um, y, is, x is 5, 20, um, sorry, 5, 0, excuse me, 5, 0, 5, 20, 0, 0, and if you want, you could have, we'll say, um, uh, a 0, 5 up here too. Now, what don't we have in that? We don't have angles, theta. You could call this one alpha if you like. We don't have the length of this side here, the hypotenuse. Now, but what is the rate of change? What is what does that mean? Well, it's how quickly is the y changing with the x? So this tells us, if you look at it, after 5 units in the x, you've gone 20 units in the y. So the rate of change of x, or the rate of change of y, with respect to x is equal to 4. So every 1 unit that you change in the x, you change 4, or, or 4 units in the y. So you could say 1 is to 4, or, or that would be, sorry, 4 is to 1, excuse me, that would be 4 is to 1. 4 is to 1, but we, like, we, we write, we'll say, instead of doing that, we often just write 4 over 1. If, if it was the other way, for example, say if the, if the slope was uh, 0.25, it would be um, 1 is to 4 or a quarter. Look, I'll, I'll give an example as to wh where that could be in, in a moment. So we're saying, like, you should be able to see, well, look, how I, the x is changing a certain amount, the y is changing a certain amount, the y is changing with respect to x by the ratio of the two. So, but look, what is the ratio? If you look at Sokotoa, I'm going to single out one of those here, tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. But what did we say opposite over adjacent was a second ago? 
we said it was the slope because look we said the slope was the rate of change at y with respect to x so every 20 units in the y you change 5 units in the x therefore your slope is equal to 4 opposite over adjacent you can see how they how they main, uh, how they uh, how they match up so another way of getting the, the acceleration without using uvast is tan and you just you just do the following you don't need theta you just say tan theta is equal to m is equal to slope is equal to acceleration like that then you'd say tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. You'd say tan theta is equal to 20 over 4 or over 5, excuse me, is equal to 4. Therefore the acceleration is equal to 4. Right? So I'm just after giving an example. Let's see using the current question does that stand up to scrutiny? So the current question we have a triangle whereby we have the following. We know that this is 40, so the length of this side is 40. We know the length of this side is 20. I'm going to call this angle here theta. So, tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent is equal to the acceleration is equal to m is equal to the slope. All of those things Excuse me, sorry about that now, I know you couldn't see that. I'll do that. I'll, let, I'll pause there a moment. The slope, which is equal to, we call it m, is equal to tan, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, is equal to the acceleration. They're all the same thing. So tan theta is equal to 40 over 20 is equal to 2. We are given in the equation the acceleration is equal to 2. So that shows that you're able to get the acceleration using the uh, the acceleration using the tan. I don't know if I explained that um, too well. If I didn't, or if any suggestions, please put them in the comments on that. So anyway, I don't want to be pushing this one too long. We've, we've been going on for this this this, this for uh, quite a good bit. So let's let's strike on. We're going to do region two. So in region two, let's go u v a s t. The initial velocity or the initial speed for region 2 is the, is the final speed for region 1. So that's 40. We know the acceleration is equal to 0, therefore the final velocity is 40. And we don't know the time or distance or speed. Time or, or distance. So what if we try v is equal to u plus at? That won't give us anything. Let's try a distance. u plus v over 2 times t. Therefore, s is equal to, uh, we'll say, um, 40t. And I'm going to call that 40 times t1. So all we know here is that s is equal to 40t1. 